hold up. You guys mean to tell me that people actually think saying into three is going to ruin the game of Yu-Gi-Oh? Uh, but anyway, today's video has been brought to you by Dairy Queen. Uh, without them, this fat man would not have, well, a good day. See, double cheeseburger and fries is really all I need to get my day going. And Dairy Queen provides that to me. God, I gotta, I, I love making these, these funny little commercials. But anyway, people on Facebook today fucking are you rambling about, oh my god, fucking sang and fucking cars go ruin the game of you. No, it's fucking not. Stop the shit right fucking now, all right? Sangin is not super fucking relevant. I'm sorry to fucking tell you that, all right? I don't know why the fuck you're fucking freaking out. There's a lot of other things that happened on this list, and you're worried about fucking singing. Do you not realize every deck has a main deck in pure order now? Like, Maxi is at one, and you're over here like, What the fuck, Exodia is going to be the best deck in Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, please. You're probably one of those people that believes that internet cyberbullying is absolutely real and that you could just walk away from the equation. You are right. You can walk away. But now you're telling me that Exodia is the best fucking deck in Yu-Gi-Oh! And every, everybody thinks that, oh my god. Not everybody. Like three people. I fucking read three people at damn Facebook. Like, I just really sing it went to three. Oh my god. Hashtag Exodia. And then my favorite was, oh my god, Sangin's at three, Kami, what the fuck are you doing? And then it was the one that's like, Sangin's at three, time to play Exodia. What in the fuck? I mean, like, I get the fact that, you know, the little guy that's just kind of chilling in, in his head, he's like, oh my god, I get to play my tier four Exodia deck. Sure, that's fine. You can do that. You know, you can even go tour guide into Sangin. That's fine. You know, I would, I'd rather fucking see, you know, Sengen search for the one of Max C. Like, that's a way better argument than you thinking that Exodia is a relevant deck again. There might be one guy in the entire world that will steal one or two free wins at a regional with Exodia. Maybe, you know what, I'll even give you even more benefit of the doubt. I'll even let you have a YCS. You might steal one win with Exodia, but Exodia is not deep drag and draw. It's none of that fucking fancy ass shit that we've been used to over these years. Exodia needs to be able to functionally get past turn two in a game state. Now Yu-Gi-Oh might go to turn three, all right? Now, unless there's this magical Exodia deck that has consistency beyond consistency, that is better than every other deck in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh in terms of speed and somehow still has a deep drag and draw engine, um, after all the deep dragon draw stuff is gone, including a pot of greed, a graceful charity that you've just been hiding underneath the rug for years that's somehow magically legal. That's not generic, that only caters to Exodia. Then Exodia could be good. Alright. Now, to the one Exodia player in the comment section that's going to say, Robbie, you're just a fucking moron because you don't believe that Exodia is a good deck. You're right, I don't. And as I said, I wish I had a doll right now to point to to be like, where did Konami hurt you? Um, because you think that saying into three is the best thing ever for your deck. Kudos to you. I, I would argue that Pot of Greed, Grace of Charity, and everything else is good. And as I even said, fucking saying it searching for Max C is better than Exodia coming back. But, you know, that's just me, guys. That, that's just... Whoo! Sorry. I, it's uh, getting a little bit hot in here because fucking people telling me that fucking saying in is a good card right now. And that fucking, it's amazing. Yeah, you're right. So, thing is, though, Sangin has potential to be good. Search Maxi. And it's not like you can go tour guide into Sangin overlay into Grenosaur Detach. That was like four years ago. Uh, if you guys didn't actually know, there was a point in time where Sangin Detach off of Grenosaur in like the first week of the Xyz monsters being out in the TCG. That actually worked because. Somehow the Xyz monsters were quote unquote not off the field. Like they were literally the entire time of Yu-Gi-Oh I've ever heard the term called limbo uh, was used in that short attention span um, of time. So definitely not a good time. It's also the same week that uh, Utopia was supposed to be too quick effect that could negate D Prison because you could just attack with Utopia, detach, negate, and you're like, ha ha, suck it, loser. You know, same thing kind of goes with fucking the whole Sangin thing. 
I don't know. Like, I get people are excited. I get that saying in from zero to three could be an exciting thing. All right? But getting your hopes up saying that a five-card win condition that has not been consistent in fucking years can get you there is a bit absurd and I to to the hopeful dreamers you will just be the hopeful dreamers you guys you live your life the way you want to live your life and I will live my life the way I want to live my life not playing Exodia um I don't know there's not much else to really say on the topic it's just some people I get you're happy I get you're excited as I said but you need to calm that shit down right quick you know go Go buy your zoo deck. I can't wait to make the video discussing about how zoo has dropped so horribly and then how zoo is going to just shoot back up. Like, zoo has reached an all time low. And this goes into the, the Exodia player category here. There's going to be those amount of people that are going to complain that, oh my god, zoo's too expensive. Zoo, 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 zoo is dropping. <laughs> down, down we go. And these people that think Exodia is good, they're going to miss their opportunity to pick up a good deck because they think Exodia is good. And it's one of the unfortunate downsides to this game. You know, a perfect examples of why Exodia is not good. Every deck sets up a board that's near unbreakable turn one. Now, the opposite could be said about Chain Burn, though, up before Zoo got hit. And the reason why Chain Burn had any decent matchup whatsoever in the metagame was the fact that it used the opponent's advantage against them. You know, when you're looking at a deck like Exodia, you, unless you have appropriate on the field, which is going to take a turn to set up, uh, which is pretty sad as it is, you know, unfortunately, your deck isn't feeding off of the opponent the way that Chain Burn was feeding off of the Metal Zoo players, off of Zoo in general. And it, it's really sad to, like, make that comparison, though, because... I never expected Chainbird to come back because after the whole oh my god, you know fucking we don't get a six card anymore, turn one you're like, what do you do? And that's another thing that really hurt Exodia was the lack of the six draw but we'll, we'll talk about that here. But anyway unless your deck is interacting off of the opponent to create a strategy outside of just set Sangen pass, you know, unless you opened up four cards into fucking Sangen like, okay, like you got me one game. The other game is two and three, where Twin Twisters and everything else I play are relevant to you. You know, if you play against Metal Foes, lol, like that's relevant in 2017 anymore. You know, Mithrilium bounce back, fucking you're saying, and well, what do you what do you do? What do you do? You know, I feel like there's still gonna be people playing Abyss Dweller. What do you do when you're saying against Dwellard? You know, these are all very relevant cards, except for, except for Mithrilium. <laughs> Kieran's gone. Uh, but, what do you do? It's, it, especially if you're playing against a matchup that your opponent doesn't really... Like, you don't care what your opponent does, and your opponent doesn't care what you do. Because your opponent can just waste resources to make more effective answers. And that's one of the downsides to Sangin is... Outside of Sangin for Maxi... Thing is just not that good. You know, I get that the card had the errata, and that's cute. Sure, that's that's acceptable. I get that. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, you could you could search it at the end of your turn for your opponent's turn, but it, it's just one of those things. Like if, if Singen had been left the way he was, then Exodia players would still be angry. Don't get me wrong, but at least the card would be have some viability to it. I would definitely be excited to see Sangen resolve to search for your one on max C. Uh, that way you could use it in the same turn. But with the Sangen errata in place, nope. We're not we're not getting there, guys. It's, it's a very unfortunate thing with this game. Uh, erratas, they've become a little bit more of a norm, and unfortunately, they've necessarily ruined Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, at least in that aspect. You know, cards that were printed back in the day, I feel like... I guess they're trying to eliminate the ban list by making these cards more viable, but at the end of the day, um, seems like it hurts a little bit more than anything, so 
But yeah, guys, leave a comment down below. Tell me what you guys think about Exodia being relevant with Sangin. I don't think it's going to fucking happen. I've said my piece on that. I, I just think people are excited. And this is going in the dumb idea roster that we fucking see every fucking ban list. So, alright, well, I'm out. I'm going to go home and eat my food. That's not all, folks. Please subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Please check out my Cardfight Vanguard channel, VanCole40. You guys will get an insight in our playtesting sessions. And please check out the Zodiac Duelist TV Twitch stream. That way you guys can follow the House of Champions and M. Cole 40 Interactions. Please check out M. Cole Games for all of your guys' trading card game needs. And if you guys enjoyed this content, please check out my Patreon in the description. Every bit helps to the creation of these videos. One step at a time and improvement, and that's the goal of this channel. Alright guys, have a good time, and thanks for watching.